Okay, so now we can actually talk about mutations. And hopefully you've done the reading and you remember the different types of mutations. Right now we're going to talk about point mutations, the different types of point mutations. And so if we want to talk about real point mutations, because we are going to talk about them in this course, uh, we've got to talk about genes that are mutated and what are the mutations due to the gene sequence and the protein sequence. So here I'm showing you a, um, an image from a brochure from a company called ATCC. This company sells cancer cells. They sell a lot of uh, biologicals. And one thing they sell are cancer cells. And you can order up some cancer cells and do some experiments with them. And many of these cancer cells have been well characterized. Their DNA has been sequenced. And their genes that have been mutated have been identified. So you would look at a table like this to look at the different mutations that would be present in different cancer cell lines. And so I want to talk, we're going to learn how to read this table. And we're going to see point mutations in a gene called P53. Actually, uh, the gene is called TP53. The TP53 gene, and that's how I would draw a gene. I would draw a box and I put the gene name in there and that little arrow for the transcription start site. That is the gene. The gene codes for a protein called P53. And in fact, P53 is the most commonly mutated um, gene or protein uh, in human cancers. So usually people call it the P53 gene. Um, there, but the official name is TP53 gene makes the P53 protein. And we're gonna learn a lot about that later in the course. Um, but let's talk about mutations in P53, the most common uh, cancer gene mutated in human cancers. So if we looked at this table of different cancers um, that were isolated from patients and the um, cancers were grown in the lab and now their cells are frozen and propagated and, and can be uh, bought and experimented on. Um, if we look at the table here, we see something that says gene sequence. And for all these different cancer cell lines that you could purchase, um, we see some numbers and some letters, right? Sometimes there's a couple of letters, sometimes there's a few letters. What does that mean? Um, there's also this other column here that says protein sequence. And again, I see some letters and I see some numbers and some more letters. So you need to be able to read this table to understand gene mutations and understand cancer. So I'm gonna teach you how to read this table um, so that you can understand mutations and, and how they're linked to cancer. So this is an introduction to understanding how to read um, the mutations in the literature. So uh, to do that, let's talk about a theoretical gene. So I'm gonna draw here uh, a theoretical gene with some nucleotides in it. So again, that's how I draw a gene. And I'm drawing some nucleotides in the gene. So there's a start codon, the ATG, the stop codon, the TGA. And uh, scientists typically number the nucleotides in a gene. Because if we want to talk about which ones are mutated, well, we've got to number them so we can know which ones we're talking about. So nucleotides are numbered. Typically, the numbering starts from the first nucleotide that's in the first codon. So the first codon here is ATG. So the A is the one, T is two, G is three. And so scientists would number all the nucleotides in a reading frame, in an open reading frame. So these are all the nucleotides in exons, not introns. So hopefully you recall the difference between introns and exons. Introns are not, uh, don't have coding information, exons do. So this is all the nucleotides from all the exons that are uh, spliced together to make an open reading frame for a protein. So let's say our theoretical protein is 600 nucleotides in length in the open reading frame. So hopefully you also recall from molecular biology or genetics or biochemistry, uh, these things called codons. So these are these three nucleotide groups of uh, three groups and three nucleotide letters together that um, when the information is transcribed into uh, RNA and translated by the ribosome, the ribosome is reading the codons, these three nucleotide um, words, and then putting in amino acids based upon 
the tRNA matching to the mRNA. So um, actually, why don't you pause the video here and go to Google and just type in genetic code table and find an image and see if you can translate these codons into four amino acids here. So um, you can pause the video, genetic code table, and see if you could come up with the four amino acids that these four codons code for. Hopefully you're back and you've done that activity. So uh, methionine, leucine, cytosine, and valine. Those are the those codons code for those amino acids. Now we're not going to write all of them out, but uh, hopefully you know how to read a genetic code table. Right? I've got one of them right here. All right. So now let's let's talk about mutations. Finally, let's talk about mutations. Um, so let's come up with some theoretical mutations and how they would affect this gene and how we would write them out, how we would read about these mutations. So let's say you saw in a table that just like the one we saw before, it says C period five T to A, right? That is that greater than symbol really is an arrow T to A. So what that information says is that the, in the coding region, position five, the T, all right, is mutated to an A. So look at position five, right? And that codon is supposed to be CTC. But now if it's, that T is mutated to an A, what is the codon? CAC. So pause here, look, go look at your genetic code table and tell me what amino acid change that is. Is it an amino acid change? It is an amino acid change. Hopefully you paused it and looked. So that amino acid, uh, that codon CAC does not code for leucine anymore. It codes for something else, all right? And so the way that this is written uh, when we write uh, in a mutation, uh, in a table that talks about mutations is under the protein sequence, P for protein, L, the original amino acid, the number or position of the amino acid, two, and now the new amino acid, R. What is R? It is arginine. And hopefully you recall from um, biochemistry, the difference between leucine and arginine. There is a huge difference between leucine and arginine. So this mutation could really affect the function of this protein, positively, negatively. We'll talk about that later. So this is how it would be written out. Now here's the question. What kind of mutation was this? So we changed T to an A. So it's a point mutation, but what kind of point mutation? Nonsense, missense, or frame shift? It is a missense mutation, changing one amino acid from a leucine to an arginine that changed one amino acid. That is a missense mutation. Let's see another example of mutation. Let's see we're reading this table and it says C9, C to A. So look at position nine, nucleotide position nine, that C is now an A, so what is the codon now? The codon is now TGA. So pause the video, go look at a genetic code table. What is the codon now changed to? What is the amino acid changed to? Well, you probably have seen it is a stop codon. So this would be written as protein, the uh, cysteine at position three, star. There's no amino acid, it's a stop codon. So what kind of mutation is this C to A mutation? It's a point mutation. What kind of point mutation? It is a nonsense mutation, correct. So this would uh, terminate the protein at the, after the second amino acid. All right, so now let's look here. Uh, this mutation, C3 and 4, INSA. Can you guess what that is? It is an insertion between nucleotides three and four of an A. So an insertion of one nucleotide. What effect is that going to have on the codons? It is going to shift the reading frame of the codons. So instead of the second codon being CTC, we now have an A inserted. So now the second codon is ACT. And the next codon is CTG. And the next codon is CGT. So the, code, the frame is shifted because you've inserted one 
nucleotide. That is, in fact, a frame shift mutation. So this would be indicated, um, again, P and then um, dot, and um, the leucine at position two is frame shifted. So the amino acids that are going to come after it are going to be all different than the amino acids that are supposed to be there. And also, odds are there's going to be a stop codon somewhere in there. There's going to be some TGA or some TAA in there that is now in frame um, with the rest of the protein, and it'll probably be terminated uh, early. So insertions of one or two nucleotides um, will shift the frame. What about, you see this, again, two numbers, and then DEL, and then we've got here, what do we got here, GT. That is a deletion of nucleotides 10 and 11. The G and the T are deleted. So what effect would this have on the protein? Well, again, if you change the number of nucleotides in this gene by one or two, delete two, delete one, you're going to shift the reading frame. And so that, again, would be a frame shift mutation. So you would write this as um, the protein with the valine at position four is now frame shifted. And again, odds are there's going to be a star stop going on somewhere down the line. So insertions or deletions of one or two nucleotides will shift the frame. Insertions of deletions of three nucleotides, what would that do? Would that shift the frame? It actually wouldn't shift the frame. If you inserted three nucleotides, you would just have an extra amino acid. If you deleted three nucleotides, you'd lose one amino acid. But the frame sh would not shift. And that happens sometimes as well. Lastly, um, what if you see this? Now we got one to 200 del. What do you think that means? That is a very large deletion, deleting all of nucleotides from one to 200. So what effect is that going to have on the protein? Well, you've deleted a third of the protein nucleotide coding sequence. You're probably not going to make any protein. So this would be indicated by P0 or P0 question mark or P question mark. There's no protein being made. So uh, these are theoretical examples of how one would uh, read uh, nucleotide changes in this gene. Well, let's go back to the gene we just saw, the TP53 gene, and see actual mutations in this gene. So we're going to look at this first uh, cancer cell line at the top, SW13. It is an uh, adrenal gland carcinoma. And if you look here under gene sequence, it, now you hopefully you can read this. So you see it says C577, C to T. So what kind of mutation is that? Well, it's a point mutation at position 577. The C is mutated to a T. What kind of point mutation is it? Well, for us to know that, we have to look at the protein sequence. So it says H193Y. So H, hopefully you remember from biochemistry what H stands for, histidine. So there's a histidine at position 193. That is the normal um, amino acid at position 193 for P53. But now it is mutated. It has changed to what? A Y? What is Y? Tyrosine. So changing one nucleotide, C to T, change that one amino acid from an H to a Y, histidine to a tyrosine. So what kind of mutation is that? What kind of point mutation? It is a, is it a nonsense? No. Is it a frame shift? No, it is a missense mutation. So now you can read that. All right, let's read another one. Let's read this one all the way at the bottom. Um, it says C1024, C to T. Oh, it's another point mutation, right? Nucleotide uh, 1024 changes a C to a T. What effect does it have on the protein? So what's the original, um, what's the original amino acid? It was a arginine at position 342. What has that uh, amino acid been changed to? Well, I see a star there, it's a tiny star. So that must be a stop codon. That is, so what kind of mutation is this? A point mutation, what kind? That's right, it is a nonsense mutation. All right, put in a stop codon. 
So P53 um, could have that point mutation at the top, could have that point mutation at the bottom. What about this one? In this cancer, this is a, um, a leukemia. In this leukemia cancer, um, K562, I see here it says C4647INSC. So that is an insertion of a C between nu uh, nucleotides 46 and 407. So what effect is that going to have on the protein? If you look there, there's a Q. So Q is the original new, uh, amino acid. And hopefully you remember what Q is. Um, glutamine. And at what position was glutamine? It was at position third, uh, under 36. But now we have inserted one nucleotide. So we have shifted the frame. So you see FS. So there's a frame shift. And you'll see that it says star 13 because... 13 codons away, there was a stop codon. So it frame shifted and it terminated the, um, uh, the protein sequence. Um, lastly, we could look at this one here, underlined here, this SAO2 cancer, it is an osteosarcoma. And it says C1 to 1182, DEL 1182. Well, guess what? DEL, deletion of 1182 nucleotides, which is pretty much the whole gene, right? So virtually the whole gene is deleted. So any protein made? Well, it says P0, question mark. Eh, nope, no protein. So, um, so now, hopefully, if you're looking at this table, you're actually uh, starting to be able to read this type of information. Uh, and we're going to see different types of mutations in the future. So really, you do need to have to be able to read this type of information. So um, there'll be one more video um, after this talking about mutations.